setup and we're actually headed over there right now that was probably the most re thing most requested thing is everybody was like hey you know just go over the across the street and throw some bcs on it and that was pretty much the plan uh, i talked to cody uh before we actually even headed down i was like hey if we drive this thing down there with these blown freaking coils blown struts can we uh can we put some on and he said yeah so that's the plan today uh and then shortly after that we're going to go to the track we'll probably spend a little bit of time installing these guys and then we're gonna to try to get to the track because if you see in front of us, we got uh, we got Cletus in the in the neighbor. So he's taking the Crown Vic out to OSW today. Uh, Adam is bringing, I believe, the S15, the 350Z, and uh, we're basically gonna do a little a little private drift day over there. TJ Hunt has his uh, his 2J 350Z. So uh, lots of cool stuff going on today, and uh, we might tr try sliding this around. I don't know how silly that silly of an idea that is, but. I guess we'll see. All right, guys. So we made it over here to BC Racing. Uh, as I said, this thing, this whole building is super baller. So where Adam actually is now, his current shop is where they used to be. So now they have this nice, big, super pretty facility. We're gonna get some freaking coilers for the R8. And some short strings. Yeah, get the swept up here as well. That'd be tight. They got all their uh, their coilovers kind of laid out over here. So, so here's their uh, BC Forge line. They actually make wheels too. But yeah, the inside of this office is super baller. You got Chelsea Nova over there on the screen. Ty, what do you think of this office? This is this office goals? Yeah, it's a super nice facility. It's tight. It's gold, man. It's tight. Go for gold, man. Go for gold. Oh. All the G series. What do you guys have? Just a little bit of inventory. Just a little bit. That's crazy. And then it just goes, it goes back through all the shelves. That's crazy. So this is the whole custom side right here. So these are all custom shock bodies and cartridges and springs, uh, BC springs over here. They got all the Swift springs over here. And the nice thing is, is uh, basically they have a bunch of replacement parts in all these bins. So a couple years ago when I wrecked my 240 in the wall out in Vegas, basically we just replaced like a couple parts on the actual shock or on the front coilover. So they just basically sent out to replace the certain pieces that actually broke, which are super nice. I know a lot of coilover companies over here in America or you know not in America it's hard to get parts and pieces for whereas you could get like one little minute detail of the coilover like you know just the shock body at the top or some springs or washers or something like that so super sick that they have all this stuff in-house this place is freaking impressive it's super sick this is a 4k spring yeah and this is a 44k so these are for the stance boys, yeah? Yeah. yeah. No wonder they just basically want it just completely it's hard part by the suspension or removal kit. Yeah.
got it in here and uh, we're getting the rear wheel tires off. Showed us a cool trick though, is actually, this is how you don't have these things come like popping off. This is how you get them off without ruining your day. You kind of have the little carts there. Rolls right off. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. So how many of these R8s have you seen with the, the blown Magna ride? Uh, this is going to be my second one. Yeah. The first one was the, the test one that we did, and then this will be the second one. Yeah, so, so this, I guess it's like a 90%, like if you look at a used R8, yeah. over 20,000 miles, they're just like blown. Oh, really? That's just what they do. Yeah. So. The last gentleman that we did the test kit on, he said the same thing, that it was completely blown. Yeah. And um, you could actually feel it. So oh, yeah. but once we did our kit, he was so happy. He was yeah. completely astonished at how well it handled compared to what he had yeah. before. So. We're just, uh, I can't wait to see what you say once we put yeah, it on. Yeah, I'm stoked. Well, we're doing a track day with it on uh, Wednesday, too. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. yeah, we literally like had 30 miles on it, like swapping the motor in it. Yeah. And then we're like, all right, I guess we're going let's to Florida. So. All right, let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's do it. Just a little bit quicker. We're trying to get to OSW. Go drift it. Yeah. Yeah. Che Chevy wants to give us a little slide. So I mean, we'll, we'll probably play with it a little bit. I ain't gonna go freaking crazy. This is. I mean, we get, we do have to drive it home, and we have to drag race it tomorrow, and then we're gonna take it to the firm. I'm excited to see how it handles down the coils of the firm. Oh. It's gonna be. Man, it's gonna be. Even just driving it on the street is gonna be so much less sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. This is exciting. Almost more excited for the coilovers than like when we first had like. It's almost the same excitement as that like first yeah, drive. Yeah, so it's like not <laughs> a freaking sketchy pogo stick R8. Yeah. How did uh, how'd it go? I mean, I feel like that's one of the easier pullover installs we've done. Yeah. It was super simple. Let's do it, uh, so if you guys have an R8, you guys could install coilovers in your garage in 15 minutes or could, less. Yeah, I mean, I mean, 15, it's honestly probably been what, 30? I, it's probably like one person about an hour install, I would yeah. say. It probably took longer to I take mean, the fender liners out. Than it that. did. Yeah, you could easily do this with just some jacks. Like, and you need a T30, mm -hmm. an, eight, an 
18 mil and a 17 mil. Yeah. And that's it. And that's and like to unplug a yeah. connector. And if you have a T30 on an electric, because they're all just fender liner bolts, there's like 10 per side or something like that. That's going to be most of them, but it's super, super simple install. So we're going to, um, he said that the ride height should be pretty, pretty much set from the, out of the box, how they have them. So we're going to be pretty comparable to how the H and H and R's were set up. So hopefully not too much adjustment. We went with uh, 15 clicks on the dampening. So right in the middle, we're going to start there and you know, we'll kind of dial it. We'll drive probably to OSW, see how it feels and then give a little bit of a so we, we basically have manual magnaride okay so manual magnaride mag yeah. manual magnaride it's not as smart like we're not as smart as the magnaride but mm -hmm. if we're driving it on the track and we want a little bit stiff we just go we go to give it a couple clicks mm -hmm. if we're driving across the country and we want a little bit soft we go the other way that's pretty much it so the magnaride i guess adjusts like while you're going into corners so it like knows if you're driving it hard so it'll like stiff in one side of the car and do some other stuff supposedly but, but I mean, this thing obviously was. But we also anything. we also saved about nine thousand. I didn't want to pay so. eighteen hundred dollars per shock. shock to get them rebuilt. So yeah. this is uh, this is definitely I think the best option. And every, a lot of the people that actually put the BCs on them and track them say they like them more. So yeah, versus that stuff. So, huh? Yeah, it's gonna be we'll fun. See. It's gonna be reassuring, I guess, is one way to one way to go about it. Not a pogo stick. No. Nope. Pogo, pogo stick. stick. And I don't have to hear the word pogo stick anymore. You guys don't have to hear the word pogo stick anymore. I'll compare it to not a pogo stick. Be like, well, I'm not going to let him say it. Anytime he says pogo stick, I'm just going to cut it out like he's cursing. I'm just going to edit it out. raising the front of it a little bit when we uh, dropped it down on the ground it sat really low and it actually kind of tucked the tire up inside the fender uh, with these H&R lowering springs you obviously don't have any control over ride height that's one of the other benefits of actually throwing a coil over on here so we could actually adjust the ride height for um, you know kind of more so like a road trip or something we could pop it up a little bit or lower it if we were gonna go to like a car show um, or just kind of get the, the proper fitment so yeah, basically when we uh, when we lower these things we'll just loosen it right here and actually thread the shock body down into it so we don't actually have to change the rebound rate or the any of the preload settings preload, preload yeah we want to so the preload setting so what we'll do is we'll break loose this bottom lock ring right mm -hmm. obviously it's loose and now what we use is this one and you go right to go up and then if you want to go lower you take the big one mm -hmm. and then you go obviously to left yep. so left to lower right to up you know to go higher so we're going to raise it probably about a half inch and i always use the lock ring as a kind as a starting gauge, point yeah. but the best way to actually do this because i'm not even showing you the correct way which will from the fender to the, of the wheel to the center of the wheel hub so we're at 14 and a half and if we go to the other side we'll notice that will be exact that way we know we have a reference point of where we're starting and then it's about 14 and a half exactly yeah. so now we'll just go according raise it and then measure compare then lock the lock links and then set it back down on the ground so let's try that first yeah and we're, we're pretty much trying to set it pretty much exactly where it was when uh, when we started so we shouldn't have to do any other alignment settings but if you do actually throw a car on coilovers you do need to take it in and get it properly aligned too and Sometimes, depending on what car you have, you have to adjust the. You have to adjust. You have to buy some adjustable suspension arms. Some because some of the factory ones don't have enough, basically adjustment in them to get the alignment settings correct. That's it. Yeah, that looks 
good. So basically uh, raised it up and down twice and I went ahead and adjusted the coilovers so we actually had a good ride height because initially it was kind of tucked in there and then uh, so now I think that's about the perfect, perfect, perfect ride height. The rear is a little bit taller too and it should actually settle about, a, about an eighth of an inch or so once, once we actually start driving it and doing some stuff. So I think we're at a, a really solid ride height to where we're not going to be scraping stuff. But it uh, doesn't look like a monster truck either. So yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get this thing cleaned up, pulled out of here, and clean off the windshield inside of the windshield. And then we're actually going to head over to, uh, to OSW, to the skid pad over there. And uh, Adam and everybody is over there drifting. So um, we're going to go hang out with them, maybe drive the Z, Maybe drive some. Maybe drive the chaser. Do some other stuff. But uh, pretty excited. What do you think? Was yeah. Next. Excited for it not to pogo stick. Not to pogo stick. That's right. So look at these BC forged wheels. They're off-road series. Oh, these are sweet. Yeah, I was looking so at these, these earlier. These are good looking. Yeah, wheels. these are the off-road ones. They need to make freaking eight lug ones. Is yeah, what they need. But they have uh, like they're doing an overland coilover setup too. So they actually have some stuff set up for I believe the Forerunners coming out soon. And then the, like the JK Jeep, like the four doors, which are super sick. Like this, this is one of the, this is one of the owners, Jeeps, this is sick. Got them BC forged wheels. Got these guys right there. Yeah. That's awesome. Right there, the leaks. Yeah, we're leaking, BC, BC racing leaks. Yeah, that's sweet. I always love these Jeeps. I'm uh, I'm not the only tool bag in the R8 now. You're the only one in the world to probably have a full tool bag in their R8. And other than, other than when, when you're riding on it. Well, I mean, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're, but this is probably the only one that has one. I mean, yeah. I feel like R8s probably, oh, I, probably I, I, inherently I have tool bags in them. <laughs> I don't know, I understand what you're just telling. I, I didn't get that first. So as you can see behind me, we got the R8 all done, and I appreciate BC Racing for uh, for letting me kind of do the coilover install over here. It looks freaking sick. I mean, maybe it's because I cleaned the wheels. Technically, I think it's about the same exact ride height in the front, just a smidge taller in the rear, which I'm fine with for road trip wise. So um, yeah, price out a little bit, but we're gonna actually uh, get headed over to the track. But uh, if you guys are interested in a set of these coilovers, be sure to head over to uh, the links in the description. We actually do sell them. We are a dealer for BC Racing. We don't have all the cars listed, but uh, if you guys want to support me and BC Racing, you guys could order them off our website, motionalperformance.com. The crazy thing is you can actually get entries for our giveaway, the 2017 Subaru WX, um, by basically making a purchase on the performance website and buying parts for your car as well. So yeah, super sick. But uh, as you guys know, I have BC Racing coilovers on the Supra, the Drift Car, the Civic, uh, the giveaway car, the WRX that we just uh, we just did, and now obviously the R8, and uh, they have been a huge supporter of me and the channel, and my projects and drifting and stuff over the years. And uh, if you guys want to go check out their stuff, just uh, be sure the links in the description. But yeah, okay. All right, let's. Uh, I guess there's nothing else left to do other than take this thing for a drive, and uh, see how it feels. We'll let you guys know. Yes, I mean this isn't just sketchy. All them rocks. A dump truck in front of me? We got a check coilover system light now? Tell me what do you think? It feels so much better. Just like hitting dips. Like you expect it to go like doing, you know, the freaking little, what, 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 what do we call it? Call it, type, call it Bouncy boy. Pogo stick? Bouncy boy. And it's, 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 it's just better. So we're a couple miles away from the track. I'm gonna try to stay back from this freaking dump truck because that's sketchy. Got out here about 30 minutes or so ago to, uh, to OSW. We got Jimmy Oak coming his S52 swapped E30 BMW. Taylor's got his uh, 5.3 swapped Miata. Uh, Garrett or Cletus just loaded uh, the neighbor up on the trailer. He was doing some burnouts and stuff when we got here. You ready? Yes, sir. You're gonna run me over, man. So uh, I went for a ride with TJ. He's he's drifting on R888. Oh. He's That's doing the it. Sprint, baby. So much grip. It felt like we were like had like sticky glue on it or something. Adam's driving the, the S15 with all the with his new livery. I think him and TJ are gonna go out.
cool things about being friends with Adam is uh, he has a lot of really cool cars and he can't drive them all at once. So the Z is kind of a... Uh, that's Adam and uh, Taylor. Taylor's in his LS Miata. But uh, Adam built this 350Z. It's a 350Z HR, basically wise fab front, a bunch of suspension arms in the back. But essentially a stock engine uh, with a tune on it and uh, it just slays. Like you can drift the thing all day as long as the oil temps don't get hot. So that's pretty much, you do a couple laps, cool down, like you could probably spend like half a day on a set of Kendas. I come in here, pull them, cool them down, drive them through the, the little pond of water over there. Yeah, super sick to be able to drive this thing. Drove it with TJ a little bit. His car's super fast when he's following you. And then it, when he's driving in front, it's not crazy fast. So I'm able to almost keep up, but not like door things because I'm not trying to wreck Adam's car. So yeah, this thing's sick though. It's always a good time driving it. Like, this is probably one of the simplest cars to drive. You just hop in it and instantly link the whole track if you know how to drive. time ever and I think maybe someone else's drift car. I've never been anyone else besides yours. Other than mine, yeah. yeah and this so. thing's like sequential, 900 horse with some big old freaking sticky tires. It's going to change your life, yeah. So and he's going to be following TJ too. So that's going to be sick. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. It's just so smooth. Like it doesn't feel as um, crazy as it you would think it would. Yeah. But it's and he's just savage. Just he just doesn't care. He's just savage. So he well, just, like, like especially the last twenty minutes of the yeah, day. Yeah. Like, like he that's, just put it on. He like literally doored Shulman. No, like, I know. On, we, we he's see. on freaking TJ the whole time. Just yeah. He's care about being on there, buddy. Too. I think you're freaking driving the Z. No care. So you got the ride of your life then. It was fun, man. It was time. Do you think I need yeah. to drive like that now or what? I mean, yeah, you could. I should, huh? Yeah, you probably should. If you guys are... <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. Four or five? Three, three 
$300,000 worth of supercars and we're hitting every red light possible. <laughs> it's probably a good thing, honestly. Yeah, probably. Could be, yeah, probably. Probably not. Not a good thing. <laughs>